Um, thanks for sitting down with us today. You are running for the BC Marijuana Party for Delta North. That's correct. Tell us what your issues are. I know you've got lots to say. What would you like to tell us? Well, first off, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to the voters of Delta North. Uh, obviously, we don't get too many opportunities. We're not invited to all of the debates. Um, I'm running again. I ran the last provincial election. I was the Richmond East candidate. I'm here again to state the obvious. Even though the Green Party, the NDP for 30 years have talked about the legalization of marijuana, they really don't want to talk about it. And I'll address that later and how I uh, am completely familiar with what they think. But um, I'm 48 years old. I'm originally from the Prairie, Saskatoon boy. Um, I'm just one of these ex-POWs, uh, been through the drug war. I became an activist after that. Uh, there's no point in me whining about what happened to me. Your, the time to be able to speak to you is much too valuable. But uh, obviously the liberal record is a part of the reason I have a good memory so I don't forget uh, the closures of schools and the Coquihalla and uh, BC Rail, which affects me and my business. Um, I'm here obviously to stand up because uh, if I don't see, do something, nobody will. And my campaign is, I, and I hate to, some people may have heard what, I, uh, what I've said, and I, I'm asking you just to bear with me, and I'm no professional politician, so if I make a mistake, please bear with me. But my campaign is dedicated to, uh, to a fellow by the name of Jonathan Magby. Jonathan was 27 years old, and he died September 24th on the fifth day of a 10-day marijuana possession charge. And this fellow was a quadriplegic, and on the fifth day, when his mother was allowed to bring the equipment to pump out his lungs, he was already dead, and they didn't even tell him. I tried to get the media here to publish the story. Nobody really cares. Now, getting beyond that, let's look where it affects you in your pocketbook then if you don't care about the 15,000 kids getting arrested in this province every year. Possession charges in Canada are down 18%. In BC, they're up 3%. Rich Coleman, right after the Liberals win the next election, has said that he's instituting the US-style minimum sentences for marijuana. That, we've calculated. That's going to cost you taxpayers $631 million. They don't have money for schools or hospitals, but they had $631 million to put people that enjoy a plant in jail on your dime. Okay, myself, when they did it to me, there was 30 people in my companies put out of work and stopped paying taxes. I'm also here to point out to you people that if we continue to keep our head in the sand and do nothing, the issue is still going to be there. We're the only ones that are talking about dealing with the, the drug problem in BC as adults. Um, I pointed, at, when I ran in Richmond East, I said to the people there, I said, I'm going to say something to you, and I want you to remember these words because they're going to become more prevalent. And I looked at this 65 to 75 year old crowd, and I said, crystal meth. Okay? Now I say the words crystal meth, and somebody has a clue what I'm talking about. And trust me, it's going to get worse if we continue to ignore people like me that come out every four years and try to educate people about this. I'm here because I'm asking you to set aside your partisan view. I'm asking you to make the governments of the day, whether it be NDP or Liberal, stand up and do something for your children. If there's 10,000 heroin addicts living in downtown Vancouver, which the newspapers report, those are not Nicaraguans. Those are not somebody from a foreign country. Those are your own children. This war on drugs is a war on your own children. If you don't do something, instead of just building the police departments, by the way, drug prohibition is probably the best thing that ever happened to law enforcement. We got the top cop in the province, who I've already mentioned with his new, new proposals, that goes on the TV right after four police are killed in Alberta with nothing to do with the pot issue. Because, he, trust me, the fellow obviously wasn't smoking, the pot he was growing. The worst thing that happens to marijuana smokers is they turn into born-again Christians. But the issue was about an idiot with illegal guns that had already been out of jail early for child molestation. It sickened me that the top cop gets on there and starts talking about pound for pound for... The facts remain, uh, people, that the biggest supplier of marijuana to the U.S. is the U.S. We provide 2%. They try to cloud your mind with all this stuff. Aren't you sick of grow ops and hydro theft and people not paying their share? You can continue to ignore the issues and crime will still make $6 billion tax-free. Still use medical plans, still put their kids in jail, and they're not foreigners, they're Canadians, just like you and I. I got an 89-year-old man that's up on trafficking charges because he grew a plant that 75-year-old women said helped them better than $300 a month medical stuff the government makes them pay out of their pensions. Please, wake up. 
I'm tr uh, trust me, I'm not a politician. I've got children. I was, a, by the way, an approved uh, NDP nominee for Delta North. And we all know what happened with that. And that's why I'm here. Carol James had an initiative that she could have, it was in the Victoria paper, one of the NDP people had said, file this, there wouldn't have been no, ND, uh, no BC marijuana party in this campaign. But we're here. So please think about what I've said. I only have a short period of time left. Please get out and vote and watch here on May 13th. John, thank you very much. Is thank there you for having me. any last words you'd like to say? Please try to get the information. Don't believe all the rhetoric. It's just a plant. Thank you for joining me today. I'm your host, Marcia Simpson. I hope the interviews have been informative and will help you make your decision when you go to vote and mark your ballot on May the 17th.